So I'm moving for it. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> so I'm Betty. I founded the Mali in Morocco alternative movement in French movement alternative pour les libertés individuelles. That's why Mali alternative movement of uh, individual liberties. Um, so I'm gonna um, explain a little bit about uh, Mali, our work, and about our first action. It was during Ramadan, 15 years ago. Um, I have some notes. <laughs> so first of all, um, uh, you have to know uh, about Morocco because a lot of people in Europe uh, think that Morocco it's like a very um, uh, very open minded country and uh, there is like not uh, religious um, laws and practices. Uh, but Morocco is an absolute monarchy of divine rights. So divine rights. Uh, so we don't have human rights. Islam is constitutionally established in Moroccan um, in Morocco as um, the state religion. Um, so as a monarchy, we have a king, and the king is the commander of uh, the faithful. Uh, he is considered um, descendant of the prophet, um, and of course, freedom of conscience does not exist in Morocco in the constitution. So freedom of conscience and the uh, slash freedom of religion, freedom to believe or not to believe. Um, and I think that um, uh, freedom of conscience is the pillar of uh, other individual liberties. That's why I founded this movement and uh, the first action was about um, this freedom. So the, um, the penal code uh, contains draconian and liberticidal and uh, misogynistic laws. Um, so I decided to create this movement uh, that would go against like the, um, how to say it in English, against the, um, uh, the, the wind of existing uh, human rights and feminist organizations in Morocco. Um, the organizations in Morocco, um, like um, didn't dare um, raise the subject of religion and criticize religion and Islamic uh, um, laws and Sharia and the uh, Islamic patriarchy. Uh, so in 2009, uh, I decided to, um, to found Mali in 2009, so 15 years ago, and it was during Ramadan. But it really was a coincidence because um, actually I live in Morocco and I live in France. I decided to found the movement. Um, uh, it was the, the, the beginning of Facebook in Morocco, the early days of Facebook. Um, so uh, we launched the idea of the movement on this network and created a Facebook um, group. And uh, a lot of people um, uh, talk about, about Ramadan because it was Ramadan. And uh, the section 222 was naturally uh, the main topic uh, of discussion. So, because Moroccan law penalizes those uh, who publicly do not fast. So, the Moroccan penal code criminalized publicly eating or drinking during uh, Ramadan uh, fasting hours. So what this article says exactly uh, is whoever, while notoriously known for their membership in the Muslim religion, ostensibly breaks the fast in a public place during the time of Ramadan without grounds permitted by this religion is punishable by imprisonment of one to six months and a fine. But the article formulation <coughs> lacks precision, like the use of the expressions like notoriously known 
for their membership in the Muslim religion, known by whom? And ostensibly breaks the fast, are vague enough to confuse the most well-informed uh, jurists. But that's not the point, that's not our point, or that wasn't our point. Our struggle as a movement fighting for individual liberties and uh, in Morocco is to call for the repeal of this article. So um, Mali uh, was founded as a civil disobedience movement, movement of civil disobedience, sorry. Uh, it's a feminist, secularist, we have a debate with secularism and laicity, but secularist. Mm -hmm. uh, feminist, universalist, and secularist movements. So we advocate uh, laicity <laughs> and not secularism because it's not the same. Laicity as the basis for a demand to separate um, political institutions and uh, from religious um, organizations uh, because, like, religions uh, have no place in human rights and even less in women's rights. So I would like to discuss for a moment for women's rights, sexual and reproductive rights, LGBT rights, abortion rights, against state homophobia, and of course against socio-religious socio inclusion. So we organized, or we organized, uh, a lot of campaigns, a lot of happenings, a lot of, lot of uh, um, actions, uh, demonstrations, uh, artistic performance, um, uh, in Morocco, like uh, original ones and like um, people say like a uh, shocking one, but I will explain later about all this uh, or some of happenings and the uh, action. So in 2009, so we created this movement and two weeks after we think about an action, we thought about an action to organize a happening um, to, denounce, to denounce this article 222. So I co organized a picnic during the day um, of Ramadan uh, because, uh, as a movement of civil disobedience, we think that we need uh, shock actions to fight Islamic laws and practices and, like, um, fight or combat. Um, uh, backward-looking ideas and attitudes. So we launched an event on the Facebook group, uh, in the Facebook group of that time. People and the media didn't seem to take the upcoming action seriously. So it was like a premiere, um, and it also um, sounded like impossible. And uh, but for the authorities, on the other hand. I think they they did. They believe that we we were gonna seriously organize something. So we arranged to meet at a train station between two big cities, between Rabat, the capital, and Casablanca, the city um, called um, uh, called Mohammedia. So we arranged to meet at the train station in this town. Uh, but, no surprise, <laughs> the entire, entire city was under siege by the forces of law and order. The train station was, there is a lot of people, a lot of police. There was like, it was impossible to go there. So, um, police arrested us. So we were inspected, insulted, humiliated, even by the, the town's mayor. Um, a few journalists were there. So we were violently ordered to leave the city and uh, thrown into a train with secret police uh, with us. So long story short, um, the next morning, uh, the Spanish media El Mundo published an article with the headline, 10 sandwiches against 100 policemen. <laughs> so we were six people, by the way. Uh, to specify. So, this article was the beginning 
of everything. So um, that's where um, that's where it all started. Actually, it was an affair of state in Morocco. Everyone, everyone um, talking about so talking about this 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 subject, um, uh, society, public opinion, civil society, political parties. Uh, Moroccan regime, which is a really just dictatorship, and all the press, all the foreign press, all international press, international organizations. Um, so it was like hard because I was I like a little bit naive. <laughs> I didn't expect all um, all this. Uh, fortunately, a lot of support from. Uh, organizations abroad, uh, as in Morocco, everyone was against us, against this movement, against this action, uh, even the left, even like modernist people, modernist and progressive activists. Um, and I, um, I personally uh, uh, contact from the start uh, Mariam Namazi. <laughs> Yeah, from the beginning, because I, I, I knew <laughs> that I, I, we really need uh, her and her support. And um, so, um, police persecution and arrests have begun, uh, threats, um, uh, and uh, I was with my. F no, my family, in fam not my, 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 my mother, or uh, um, I was with another family in another place. So the police came to, um, in my place, in my mom's place, but uh, I wasn't there, so it was complicated. And uh, uh, the press, uh, like, uh, words, we are looking uh, for uh, Betty, blah, blah, blah. So I end up. I ended up turning myself in like a criminal and went to the police station. But uh, as I was being like bug, like my phone, so they waited for me at the st train station when I was like going to them, to the state, to, to the police station. And it was horrible, like it was like a kidnapping. So um, they um, insulted me in the car with the Quran on the radio and a lot of blah, blah, blah about Islam and um, a lot of things like this. I spent 12 hours uh, at the police station. So it was Ramadan and I, <laughs> I couldn't eat or drink. Um, so 12 hours talking about religion and how horrible I'm, I am. And uh, it's, um, I'm doing a fitna and uh, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, uh, I got out at a at 1 a.m. and uh, had to come back um, uh, the next day. The, so they just lo locked me in a room for a day. So it was a clearly a torture. Um, and after that, I was forbidden to leave the country for weeks. Um, I was all over the press, I was harassed and treated, and it was really a nightmare <laughs> um, for, I don't know, for months uh, or something like that. Uh, some people, some friends um, didn't want anything to do with me. Um, so uh, my life actually changed since that picnic um, and uh, I went from the shadow to the light, to the, the shadows from to the light in spite um, in um, spite of myself, and since um, that moment, I I uh, I'm I still fighting for individual liberties for women's rights, um, and uh, since that symbolic picnic and talking about uh, and. Uh, um, freedom of religion. Um, every year uh, we organized online campaigns and international media outings to condemn uh, the expectation of freedom of conscience of which this article is the tip of the iceberg. Um, 
I was um, I was pretty much on my own, um, like uh, as I told, even the progressive and modernist modernist left took me for a like a clown or whatever, uh, and some still do actually. We were and we are um, abandoned and ostra I don't know, in English we can say ostracized, yeah, for years, and um, but. Uh, for a few years, uh, at last, some activists and some small part of the population have been talking up, taking up the subject, this subject, um, and going to uh, um, about the, the, this article. Um, I think we were like uh, avant-garde. We were ahead, like uh, of, our ahead of, time. Time, yeah, yeah. of our time. <laughs> Um, but we have succeeded to, in uh, opening the way and opening the debate. Uh, but unfortunately, there are no uh, in Morocco. There are no. Um, there is no. Uh, um, audacious, yes, we say audacity. Audacity, yeah. Yeah, audacity and audacious like actions, or on, even online. Um, uh, to to criticize like um, religion because we have red lines in Morocco and uh, the red lines are monarchy and Islam so it's uh, it's it's hard um, and uh, most of organizations are very politically correct um, and honestly. I will share with you maybe other and other actions because 15 years, <laughs> so we have a lot of actions um, uh, of um, uh, like civil disobedience and campaign. I'm actually tired um, of always being on uh, the front line, uh, taking all. Um, the blows and arrests and cyber violence and trials uh, for this travel or for others and I hope that uh, one day in Morocco uh, activists and human rights organization will be uh, able to to I don't know to to really fight for our rights, for our freedom, and not to uh, uh, to choose like the, um, the 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 way uh, with um, uh, with the, the the regime actually. So that's it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> no. I, I speak French. Your English <laughs> my is My first great. English is French. Uh, I was going to say Brexit before. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you mentioned you you hope more people, but you've started that fire. It's only going to get bigger and bigger, hopefully, and more people are going to take up on that. So, if I can take you back to, to current time, and thank you for everything you've done for all, all of us and people like you don't even realize exists right at times if you if I can ask you to play, paint a picture of what a life of a typical apostate would look like in Morocco now and have we like what journey have we made from 2009 when you started the picnic to now is there any substantial change or yeah what is it today actually um, yeah in 2009 and uh, until I don't know 2000 maybe 15 or 16 uh, I there, I was like I was the first one of the first not the first but one of the first uh, to um, share publicly my atheism um, so it was very hard uh, for years for so many years but since like yeah maybe eight years um, now there is some people talking about um, their apostasy or atheism etc but it's it's still very 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 hard um, 
um, even in Europe, that's the thing. So it's hard. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that was my next question because sometimes people who've never experienced these issues they tend to think on very black and white terms where they look at the legal structure of a country where if apostasy or blasphemy is not legally punished they don't understand the complexity of the situation of the social consequences or how these things still affect exactly because in morocco you don't have um uh, a law yeah. about apostasy or yeah. living islam or whatever but you have another articles <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> They get uh, you, yeah, somehow. <laughs> like you are insulting Islam, exactly. Yeah. For example, but yeah, I, I, I don't think that the the laws are really the problem. It's 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 the society. Yeah. Um, it's Morocco is very religious country. Um, a lot of people in Europe, and as I told, I live in France as well. But I I'm, I'm a nomad, so I travel a lot because of my activism. Um, in uh, France and in Spain and whatever, um, and when I did a, a co when I when I'm in a conference, a lot of people um, do not know that Morocco is a very conservative country and very religious com country. When I when I explain um, uh, a lot of things and what happens and with the like the, 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 the laws against women, because we have uh, the family code and the family code is based on Sharia. Yeah. So when I'm talking about all these issues, a lot, a lot of people um, tell me like, Morocco? No, yeah. it's not like Iran, yeah. it's not like Afghanistan, it's, not, it's yeah. like Pakistan, but it's the same. The yeah. laws are the same, it's, it's Islamic Sharia, so it's the yeah. same, yeah. and yes, um, you, you, the, 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 the people, um, the, yeah, the people can, uh, the people in Morocco are very like violent, and uh, um, and even you can have a lot of problems with your family, with your yeah. work, you can lose your job, and uh, no, it's not easy. It's yeah. really um, not easy, and uh, um, but. I don't know. Um, Morocco has uh, uh, a good uh, communication. <laughs> yeah. A good picture they portray to the world yeah. because of tourism, I guess. Yeah. Tourism, but there's like a lot of um, um, I don't know, like uh, uh, France and Morocco yeah. are best friends. So in France, a lot of uh, press. Um, the political um, politics uh, yeah. say that Morocco uh, is um, uh, is not conservative mm -hmm. and that the, the king is the best and uh, uh, Morocco has um, human rights uh, blah 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 so mm -hmm. that's why it's uh, uh, it's more difficult yeah. to fight and to share yeah. um, what um, oh, what exactly uh, is Morocco because... Uh, yes, the ground reality is different from resorts that, that yeah. Westerns visit, right? But people who've only been to resorts don't really see what's happening exactly. on the ground, really. There was another really interesting protest that you, you uh, created in Morocco that was the kissing one. Can you tell us a bit about the kissing yeah. video? Yeah, the kissing was in 2013, but in 2000, um, 2012 mm -hmm. we organized a big action uh, um, uh, for um, abortion rights. Yes. So we invited a big organization from Netherlands, uh, Women on Waves, mm -hmm. and with both. <laughs> and it was the first and the only one at the mm -hmm. moment in a Muslim country. So this one was a big, big, big yeah. one because um, a lot of people from uh, the Islamic um, uh, party was there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, it was very impressive actually. So yeah, so it was uh, the first action uh, for uh, abortion rights in Morocco. Um, the thing is. That Mali is always the first movement to organize something and to to break a taboo and uh, 
um, and to um, talk about sensitive subjects, uh, etc. So, but yeah, the kissing is another thing. In 2013, um, two teenagers, um, girl and the and the and the boy, um, who had uh, who who are what? Come here, you have Yeah, 14. Yeah, no, no, yeah, but 14, 14 years old. Yeah. yeah. And they posted a picture on Facebook, they, a picture uh, with a kiss. So they, they uh, kiss. So um, that's the thing. It's a Moroccan human rights organization sued them for this picture. And so, um, so the police arrested the two teenagers and the friend who took the picture. <laughs> So they were arrested and um, they went to jail actually. So At fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. Wow. And I decided to organize a kissing a protest uh, in front of the parliament in Rabat. So we we um, we put this in uh, on Facebook the events. So and I contacted a lot of press. <laughs> national and international press so it was a big 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 thing um yeah i think the the yeah the most impressive like action yeah uh because a lot of people was there and the uh, people um conservative people young people against us against uh, our ideas um defending islam uh, uh and it was like um very violent. So you can, there is a lot of video on yeah. <laughs> internet and you can uh, take a look. Um, but um, a lot of international press uh, share um, the kissing and, uh, and uh, what happened to uh, the teenagers and um, so we won. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that, I think if we have any questions, we'll open up. If you guys like to ask any questions, please raise your hand. So, We've got one here. Uh, my question is, are there any people, like, like-minded like people in the, in the government or in monarchy? So, and what are their rules, uh, in their role in, like, the uh, organization or stuff like that? I, I, don't, I don't understand so the rule of... What? If there is any support you get from, like, pe not the government itself, but it, is there people within government? Yeah, yeah, that support. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. No, and the human rights organizations and feminist organizations yeah. do not support us, actually. Oh. Yeah. Why so, do you think that is? Is it to do with, like, to secure their funding? They have to pretend to like the, the some wave? Some of them, that yeah, be? some of them, yeah, it's a strategy. But uh, the majority, no, it's like, it's like uh, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it's Morocco, it's not like Tunisia, you know, Tunisia. Has somewhat secular history, Yeah, right? and uh, some organization yeah. doing some actions and the uh, happenings yeah. and the, uh, but um, I don't know why, but in Morocco it's not possible at all. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's too bad because I tried uh, so many times to um, to uh, like organize something with other activists yeah. with other um, organizations, but uh, it's really impossible. And um, to be honest, if you go to Morocco and you say my name. <laughs> um, so lots of people uh, hate me and even feminists and activists. Like now, there is a debate uh, concerning like um, the family code because uh, the king uh, uh, called for a reform. So it's uh, I'm always uh, fighting for women's rights for years and uh, taking risk. I had a lot of problems with the police. Arrest uh, I was arrested. I was in jail and trials and blah 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 but the 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 the, the activists or journalists or feminists in Morocco yeah we are uh, 
we want to, to change this or that, blah, 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 but, uh, you know, Islam is uh, cool, and oh, we have to ask the Imam, or, uh, no, it's bullshit, because, uh, uh, as I told, like, uh, uh, religion and Islam um, do not have a place in human rights debate or women's rights debate, so that's the thing, and I think, uh, other thing, like now, a lot of feminists about this issue of family code um, uh, are, are saying like, oh, um, thanks to our king, uh, <laughs> yeah, because he's a feminist and he called to a reform, but the thing, it's when the king in July 2022 during a speech, um, when he uh, called for this reform, he if it said we want to change things and we um, uh, we want uh, uh, to um, uh, we want women to have their rights, uh, equality, women's rights, blah, blah blah. Yes, yes, he really said that. But at the same time, in the same speech, he said. An important thing, he said that he's calling um, for a reform, to uh, a reform uh, of uh, the family code, but we have to um, to be uh, the, the reform uh, will be like based on the Sharia. He said that it's it's not my words. He said Sharia. He want to. Uh, the reform will be based on the Sharia law because I am the commander of believers and blah blah blah. So I cannot, um, uh, uh, in Arabic, how we say that? Um, he said, um, I cannot do like something uh, halal, something haram, and haram, haram. something halal. Yeah. He said oh, yeah. that. Yeah. So, how feminists in Morocco can applause and say that he's feminist and he will change things and so last year in Mali we organized a campaign uh, against the family code and in the press release we clearly say said that, uh, that um, criticized actually the, um, the system and uh, uh, we, we say that we are like secularist movements or laicity, blah, 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 and we criticize um, what the king said. So our campaign, it was a really great campaign. It was like, psh, because journalists say to me, we cannot share your campaign. <laughs> It's absolutely not possible because you are talking about secularism, laicity, and you are talking about the king saying shit. <laughs> so no, it's not possible. But yeah, you can only hope. Right? Keep trying. That's all you can do. Oh, uh, I'm pessimist. Actually, <laughs> I'm really pessimist. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there yeah. someone else? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, I know that there's a large uh, Christian population in Morocco. Um, has there been any pushback from Christians in Morocco against Sharia? And I suppose, what, would, what has their reaction been to what your group has been doing? Okay, so there is no Christian in Morocco? No Christians? <laughs> no, it's really? forbidden. So in Morocco you are Muslim. Until well, okay, you're dead. officially, yeah. Okay. No, no, it's impossible. Because there is no freedom of conscience, so we are Muslim. When you born, yeah. when you was born, until you're dead. So I am Muslim in Morocco. Okay. I'm atheist, but in Morocco I'm Muslim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so you there is only Muslim and two thousand Jewish people. That's it. Uh, but there is no Christian people in Morocco. It doesn't exist. But you have some people, as I am atheist. Some people change their religion. So they are Christian, but it's not official. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So it's impossible. For it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. I think 
Uh, it's not more complicated, but uh, than to be atheist because they they believe in God. <laughs> yeah. But um, they are um, they are more persecuted actually. The Muslim who change their their religion, so the Christian, and uh, but they we do not uh, like see them actually so it's it's very hard so you can in on internet you can uh, find some people from morocco talking about um christianity but it's uh, it's not easy they cannot go to the church for example because there is a church in morocco but for for uh, like uh, um, foreign people or tourists or but not Moroccan people because if you are Moroccan you are Muslim How so that's the thing with this article actually during Ramadan mm -hmm. that's why yeah I am Muslim so I cannot eat uh, during Ramadan in Morocco mm -hmm. even if I'm atheist because no I'm Muslim so this article applies to you yeah, yeah. To you. How yeah. Did you sorry there was a hands up th I'll come back to you yeah uh, yes and how to kind of get your message out there more so. Um, so obviously there is the sort of international coalition which was one that I think now is what we need. Is, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I think actually what we need now is a, a proper interconnected grassroots feminist network worldwide. And that's going to take people coming out of their little echo chambers and actually reaching out. So I'm wondering if, you know, contacting people like um, Filio would potentially yeah. work and things like that, because, like, we need to expand, you know. It's very interesting. The thing, it's, um, Mali as a movement, or uh, me, for example, I have a lot of connection, a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm working with a lot of organizations around the world, really. But the problem is Mor with Morocco, Moroccan organization and uh, Moroccan activists. But um, uh, Victoria, I, I have, you know that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a lot of connection in UK, France, of course, Spain, Canada, United States, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's wonderful. But I'm always the only one. I'm always the... the, the the only one from Morocco <laughs> and yeah it's uh, it's very uh, very strange so my I hope one day that uh, Moroccan activists and Moroccan uh, feminists could change um, I don't know if it changed their mind or whatever but uh, change the um, uh, yeah their ideas because the thing it's uh, like when we are feminists, we are fighting patriarchy, and mm -hmm. in countries like Morocco, we are we are fighting Islamic patriarchy. Um, but feminists in Morocco are with this patriarchy, yeah. and it had so. I guess my um, my point more was that uh, cause I, I understand exactly what the issue problem is. I'm wondering if there is a possibility. Of getting enough momentum from external parties, so I'm, I'm way more than happy to help you to the point where you know Morocco has to actually take notice, and the international stage has to take more notice, and it's about kind of pushing those buttons because it, it, it does. I mean, it takes a really concerted and, and tactical effort, and, and I feel like you know if we had you know more people to help you, even from you know different corners of the world, we could get people to take notice. And what I'm calling for is like. Solidarity with that, that, that's, yeah, but that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, but that's, yeah, that yeah. helps Mali a lot. That's yeah. what I have, yeah, that's helped us, that's helped me. That's why I'm not in jail, actually. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> because I have a lot of problems with, uh, with uh, the authorities in Morocco. I had a lot of um, persecution. Um, I was arrested. I had like um, uh, many um, uh, trials, but I'm here. I know that if I am free, and it's because I have a lot of support um, from uh, international organizations, and um, I have a lot of contact with journalists, 
etc. It, for, for, for sure, I know that that it's my like a, um, um, how to say it. Uh, even in French, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, ah, shit. Ah, I forgot. Uh, Saving grace. And I forgot. Sorry. Even in French. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, forgot. Yeah. Um, yeah. For example, in 2017, um, during um, 25th uh, in November, it's the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Uh, we organized um, a performance, artistic performance. So we colored in red all the fountains in Rabat, the water. Mm. <laughs> uh, so it's symbolic, it's a symbolic uh, uh, action to denounce the violence and you know the color, the red, and uh, red is the color when, of uh, menstruation as well, blah, blah, blah. So it's nothing because I, I do not, it's, it was not the first time, it was the first time in Morocco, uh, etc. but in other countries, um, some activists organized the, the same um, action years ago, but in Morocco, and it's nothing, and we are not talking about the king, we are not talking about the religion, we are talking about violence against women. And um, the it was uh, it was uh, a nightmare. Uh, everyone was um, against this action because it's Mali actually. <laughs> when it's Mali, uh, they know they're troublemakers. Yeah, <laughs> and the authorities, the police, um, wrote um, a press release, a press release really against Mali as group, I don't know, like a group of terrorists, I don't know, it's, it's really, it was like, what? So like, uh, uh, we are like uh, witches, I don't know, it was like, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, it was in 2017, uh, I was arrested, uh, 48 hours um, uh, in the police station, uh, and but after that, there was like uh, COVID, blah, blah, blah. And my trial was in 2022, so five years later, because I organized this action. So, okay, I'm free, it was okay, <laughs> but uh, it, it's crazy. It's crazy that uh, there was like a trial against me as I was like a terrorist because mm -hmm. I colored in red uh, uh, some things. Yeah. And uh, for in uh, two years ago, yeah, the, the, the um, uh, celebrating descent. It was like two years yeah. ago in Cologne. Yeah, in Cologne. Yeah, yeah two, two years ago, I was in Cologne, and uh, during the celebrating descent, I um, wore like a T-shirt because ah, the thing is, I I always have T-shirts with messages, always and provocative messages for them. <laughs> and in Cologne, my t-shirt was Allah is lesbian. <laughs> so when I went to Morocco after that, because I, I, um, I shared the, 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 the picture of the t-shirt social, on social media, so I was uh, contacted by the police and uh, went to the police station again, explaining what uh, what Allah is lesbian uh, means, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I know, I really, really know. <laughs> that conversation, is it recorded? <laughs> it was, no, that, that, the, 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 the funniest is, is they, they say, they always say, oh, you again, and we, and we, we yeah, um, we, we cannot, uh, 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 I have to say it. Can't be bothered. And no, it's like uh, again another thing, a yeah. strange thing. Uh, uh, we we never understand. Yeah. What do you mean? What do you <laughs> fight for? What what's the thing? What's so um, so? I try to explain, but it was very hard because oh, the police in Morocco, my God, 
Oh, it's, uh, it's a thing. But seriously, I know it's because I have a lot of support that I do not I do not have yet problems because I don't know what will be um, uh, happen after that because after the the the, 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 the interview with the, the police um, my the case is still uh, open actually so I'm waiting oh, for the Allah is the lesbian thing yeah, the Allah is it, yeah oh, so okay. I don't know uh, I'm waiting uh, but I know one thing it's uh, I do not have problem yet it's because I am bitty for sure I'm, I'm honest mm. because if other um, person activists or no or not um, do things uh, like me or write what I'm what I write uh, on Twitter or whatever um, yeah they will be in prison Mm. And there, there, there is some people in prison and for nothing. Yeah, right. Like and criticizing the monarchy is a, it's a big crime in Morocco, in Morocco, right? Yeah, monarchy okay. and Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there is like a, a woman in prison for uh, three years because they, she posted the thing. I don't know. Uh, she criticized. Uh, uh, I think uh, it's yeah. It's not criticized. It's uh, like uh, just fun. Jo right? Yeah, just fun. It was really nothing. I forgot what was it, but really nothing. And uh, she's in jail, three years uh, wow. imprisonment. Like I, I, I know that uh, uh, I'm pretty lucky. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think you had a question, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was before. Um, so I have uh, two questions. So. Because like I'm, uh, I'm from the Maldives, so I can like make a lot of parallels to what you're talking about. Um, so my first question is like, um, like uh, when you're talking about like the feminist groups in Morocco, like they have like a very like assimilationist like work within the system. Yeah. Like, uh, like if if we exactly. please them enough, maybe they'll give us some. Yeah. So like um, a, 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 a approach to it. Um, so um, maybe like uh, like you have mentioned that you write, right? You you write, right? That you write. Right? Ah, yeah, right. Yeah. So like, uh, have you done like a, 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 a criticism of that approach? Um, and that's my first question. And the second question is like, uh, what's the state of uh, vigilante violence against um, atheists in Morocco? Uh, yeah, I wrote something uh, about feminism in Morocco. Is that your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, where, where can we read that? Ah, but it's in French. But you can translate. Yeah, with the Google Translate. Ones. No, Deepol. <laughs> Deepol. Yeah, Deepol is better. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Google Translate, uh, tra uh, Translate is always a bit strange whenever I try to translate it from Urdu to English. It gives me some strange, strange... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but French is okay, but... Uh, yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not like uh, Hindu or Arabic. Yeah. Or uh, like, once I tried to translate a Sufi, like a collection of Sufi poems from Urdu to English, and the Google Translate went on to an anti-Hindu rant. He <laughs> 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 had nothing to do with Hinduism. <laughs> uh, excuse me, what's the other question? The, oh, the state of vigilante vigilantism. Like, yeah. Because like, um, uh, like a lot of violence is, of course, like state-sanctioned um, state violence, like violence by the state through it, like the state. Um, instruments, the uh, state mechanisms, but a lot of violence is also through um, a space created by the state to like enable that violence through third party actors. Like, yeah, mobs. Like vigilantes, yeah. mobs. Against, act, against atheists. atheists. Yeah. Um, like those who speak out. But there isn't, 
we don't have a lot of atheists uh, in Morocco, like uh, they are like hidden, so hidden, so it's different. That's what yeah. I, I do. Yeah. yeah. What about dissent in any form of dissent? Like, like in Pakistan, where I'm, I'm from, we have an issue of honor killing. At least thousand women mm -hmm. every year yeah. are killed in the name of honor, and that's been happening thousand every year for mm -hmm. as long as I remember. Uh, a thousand plus Hindu or Christian girls are forcibly converted and married off to their rapists and their captors just so they yeah, don't yeah, get yeah. convicted of rape. Anybody who criticizes Islam, we have more than 50 people on death row in Pakistan right now for blasphemy. Anybody who... anybody like, Because there's... You know, Islam gives you a very straight line to live in. It is in a box, it's very narrow and anything that deviates from that straight line is dissent and everything every form of dissent goes against Islam and there can be violence on every sort of dissent so how, how is in Morocco like the notion of dissent uh, no we don't have a lot of um, honor or killing yeah. but uh, is, uh, the thing in Morocco we don't have statistics <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. 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 Very important. Yeah. Um, in the Maldives also, like they say, like the Maldives is a Muslim a, country. Yes. If, um, you're, if you're Maldivian, you're Muslim. If you're not Muslim, you're not Maldivian. Yeah, it's, it, I, 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 that, that's quite common everywhere. Also, when, when Muslims say Islam is a feminist religion they always say there isn't enough like as much rape in the Muslim world than there is in the West, Western world yeah, without talking about because in in the Muslim world nobody cares about it women cannot actually go and report rape with the all gain into like extreme social yeah, consequences the same. Yeah. in West you can actually go and report it I know there's there is like extreme, uh, like in, even in West, there is a problem with conviction rates, but you can report it at least. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in, in Morocco, it's not possible because you, you cannot because have you can, no, you cannot have uh, sexual intercourse. And, uh, it's not even acknowledged in the first place. Right? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, without marriage, so yeah. if you are raped, and no, you said you are, you are, uh, yeah. uh, you are guilty. <laughs> exactly. You are not a victim. Yeah, it is so a lot of and there is a lot of victims and we organized three campaigns, three big campaigns about the the patriarchal meat of um female virginity because it's a problem. Yes. It's a it's a big problem in in uh, in uh, in Morocco. Just one thing. Um like 2 weeks ago, I think, um uh, a famous guy from the Islamic uh, party uh, and uh, he was uh, for years uh, um, prime minister, chief of the government. We say in Morocco, he said that there is no fem femicide, 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 femicide yeah. in Morocco. That it's the thing uh, in the France thing. because in France uh, it's yeah. a, there is a lot of femicide, like uh, um, one, uh, yeah, one femicide uh, every three days, yeah. I think. Um, so, so yeah, it's the same thing. They say yeah. like we don't have yeah. inside Morocco. It's like yeah, the the the, the, the Islamists is always like that. We yeah. don't have rape. We don't have homosexual because homosexual, of course, is yeah. a, a disease we don't, or whatever. Yeah. We don't have rape. We yeah. don't have uh, and uh, um, uh, at the moment, uh, as we are, uh, we have the reform of the family code, the debate about the reform. Uh, so uh, we are the fe feminists in general and moder modernists. We are against the uh, marriage of uh, minors, of, uh, yeah. yeah, of girls. And now, just now, like yesterday, uh, two, two, two days, and uh, last week, uh, um, the Islamic Party, a lot of them, guys, of course, <laughs> always men, uh, are saying like, oh no. Uh, uh, we have to debate because there's some girls, uh, um, uh, uh, mature, uh, yeah. mature to to uh, to to marry a guy. Well, so yeah, that argument. So, yeah, it's, uh, they don't recognize rape within marriage as well. Yeah, with rape no. within marriage is like yeah, no, no, no. During yeah, 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 the marital rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we organized in 2018 a big campaign against mm. marital uh, yeah. rape uh, in Morocco. So yeah, I think uh, we we've run a bit over time, but because it was a really nice and interesting conversation, didn't realize the time. 
Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Half, uh, 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 what, what time I is think it? it's half eight already. I don't know. It's eight, eight. Oh, it's eight oh, now. Eight. Okay. Oh, eight. ten to eight. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said like it's, it's fine. We've got some time then. It's no, it's fine. eight. Yeah, it's yeah. Eight. Eight. Okay. yeah. Um, but I, I, I have to. I want to know more about you guys. Okay. Actually, <laughs> right. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I don't know. If you like to, if anybody like. To, yeah. Like, right. Because, like, as ex-Muslims and apostate, no matter where we're from, and we're like community or what immigration or whatever backgrounds we come from we always have something that we connect to each other uh, and it's uh, always really interesting to find how we do that how we find that if anybody's open to like Betty said she'd like to know a bit more about you but yeah. just I think in Morocco um, people um, uh, and uh, as, I, as I told like um, yeah like a very open like uh, people of people I from the left. Spoken like a true stoner. Hash. <laughs> like Moroccan <laughs> hash. Ah, okay. ah, yes. <laughs> uh, no, I just wanna say that they they, they, they don't like like um, they don't like um, uh, ex Muslim actually. So it's very strange because they yeah. are fighting for human rights. They're from the the, the, the the left, and they're progressive people, but they really, really hate ex-Muslim. I don't know why, but it's it's a, it's a very strange. And uh, you know that a lot of people think that we are with far right. So yeah. It's a big uh, yeah. problem. Um, uh, so like since uh, I wanted to ask you like how this issue intersects with the. Um, uh, Sahrawi, uh, West Western Sahrawi and independence movement. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Western, ah, Sahara. Yeah, Western ah. Sahrawi and independent movement. And like how how like this issue like um, intersects like. No, the thing is, in uh, we, in Morocco there is uh, three red lines actually, so monarchy, Islam, and Sahara. Yeah. Okay. So we cannot. Uh, uh, no, I I, I I'm. Uh, uh, I don't have problem talking about Sahara, because I have a lot of problems with people because I'm talking about this issue. But in Morocco, you cannot, you can go to jail. Uh, you cannot say Western Sahara uh, in Morocco. You cannot write on your social media Western Sahara. It's uh, Moroccan Sahara. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can, you cannot travel to Morocco with a book talking about Western, Western Sahara. Sahara. So no, because in Morocco. The majority of um, people and of activists and of feminists, because they are in the system, they are talking about Moroccan Sahara and defending Sahara and uh, like uh, a lot of um, uh, nationalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. it's a it's a taboo. Yeah. <laughs> If you like to ask anybody, you said you wanted to know. I know we have a lot of Pakistanis. There's a lot of Pakistanis <laughs> everywhere, wherever you go. We are everywhere. <laughs> like a gremlin. In, in, in UK, <laughs> we're everywhere, literally. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three. I'm counting all of them. Uh, so we go and Irish and? Iraqi. Irish and Iraqi. We've got... Uh, I know some people uh, wouldn't mind that. We've got Indian, one solidary Indian, <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by loads of Pakistanis. <laughs> uh, we already met uh, 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 Yemeni, like uh, Yemeni background. We have Maldivian background. Uh, we have some other that I wouldn't want to uh, mention in front of everybody. And then we have, of course, our lovely two women at the back. We've all met today. I don't know. Uh, my question is, uh, how do you like, uh, uh, deal with the, uh, the um, Islamic community in UK? Because it's uh, very yeah. hard. It's not like it's France. How long do we have? <laughs> no, it's horrible because it's not like France or yeah. you know, uh, or Spain or well, Netherlands. It's uh, 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 go to the pub because they're never in but there. <laughs> 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 Go to the pub because they're never in the pub. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, because I don't know. It's, um, yeah, it's, it is it's crazy uh, yeah. in the UK. There's a lot of... Uh, it's a big, big community and very um, visible. And mm. 
<laughs> more conservative than other uh, That's true. country. Yeah, That's true. I, I can share. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Pakistan, so UK, on the face of it, I think there's a lot of Pakistani diaspora that you see around and uh, neighborhoods are you feel like you're in mini Pakistan, that kind of uh, vibe is going on there. But, um, you know, um, I think it's more of a, uh, on the face of it, because, you know, when you, when you work, you know, when you function in society, at your workplace, um, you do see different faces, and at the end of the day, we live in a secular country, and uh, the core uh, values are tolerance, and hence, you know, we all actually find our uh, soft spots where we can exist quite comfortably. So, you know, I have a lot of friends who are Pakistani and religiously inclined, which they are meant to be. And it's easy to, you know, be with them, function normally. And then you, if you want, you know, you can go to your job, you can have, you know, other um, interactions with people and uh, you, can, you can live a pretty free lifestyle. At the end of the day, it, it comes down to you how how you can exercise it. So I think we're still quite lucky in this country that we, we have those values. Um, but yes, it's a, it's a fear. Some neighborhoods, you go there, you know, for some it can trigger trauma of previous association with Islam and um, Muslims. I guess. Yeah, but otherwise, it's I think it's quite nice and comfortable that, and we enjoy a multicultural yeah. environment. That's true. A lot of like loud voices Islamist loud voices are coming from Britain and they're trying to do that but on the level like on the ground it's not as present okay. because uh, a lot of like especially in London a lot of the visibly Muslim and people from our uh, backgrounds are first generation immigrants and they're too busy with their own survival than anything else so they are not to it is the second and third generation who have actually gone into the Islamist mode and they are only there for social media and this and that uh, but on the ground it doesn't really exist I haven't I have, sometimes I do feel like there are certain areas that I should avoid but I, I haven't actively avoided any areas uh, it's just how it's portrayed mainly there are some Islamists here and they are now they're working in different avenues when you took like political atmosphere of Islamists and they are quite successful in politically but on the ground it doesn't it doesn't trickle down to the ground like Muslims on the ground they they have so many issues to to deal with in their daily lives that it doesn't really matter uh, yeah but again it only takes one crazy person there can be 99 good people and one crazy person. In most cases, at least, like, where you actually have your identity as an ex then you yeah. get the treatment of, like, okay, equality, yeah. terrorism, all of that. As soon as you mention that you're an atheist, you can see the face. Yeah. Like, that doesn't happen to any non muslim any other religious person, probably. That's true. Or any other atheist. But yeah. As soon as they expect you to be Muslim, and they, when they hear it, that social life goes out of the picture. <laughs> That, that you can't be social that's with true. them. That way, whole community goes out of the picture. That you can't be social with them. You could be social with the strangers, and yeah. you can't be social with the people with whom you share the most values, the most of your life in certain way. So, really good point. Know, yeah. Yes, they're good people and everything, but I think there is a line where they even like they confuse most probably like you were once upon a time, and they don't know how to deal with it. The first reaction to love is disgust, so for them, you know, and that's not acceptable. Yeah. If you keep it hidden and you're in their good side, that is okay. But if you bring up anything which could sort of like, uh, not ridiculing any idea of this, yeah. it's small one. Yeah, I guess you, you are right there, that as an ex-Muslim you still have to navigate through your own security and you cannot, like, you can't be 100% with other Pakistanis, you cannot, that, that is just true. And that, that would exist everywhere, literally, just to do with our own community. Uh, yeah, that is, that's a good point. That we can we can't be ourselves with people who look like unless it's in this space where <coughs> we all know we are approaching this space with that mindset, anyways. But with a stranger who looks like me, I'm never gonna be 100% myself. That's just not on the cards. Yeah, I can't I afford like to be. Oh, sorry, you yeah, was... no, no, go on, go on. okay. Yeah. Me, 
Okay, uh, so like, um, I think a lot of that is like mental because, um, I mean, obviously there are like social consequences, but I, I think that we have internalized this a lot to an extent where we like um, self censor because like I have never like uh, like since I like came to the UK, I have like never like self censored. I have like never avoided any areas. Or I have like never like been like. Uh, particularly, like, um, secretive about, like, who I am or, like, what I believe in. Yeah. And I've, it's been fine. Like, I used I used to live in Ilford. I used to, like, walk around, like, um, what? like, I, I used to, like, go from the train, like, uh, tube station to my home. Like, I used to walk down the road yeah. by myself at, like, 12, like, at, at, like, midnight with a pride flag on my shoulder. Yeah. And it was fine. It's because they didn't probably understand what it means. There was like, one easy. person like um, who I used to like see on a regular basis. Like he was a Muslim, mm. and um, we, we 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 used to like talk about religion. And so what I used to do was I I, I used to like uh, like feign ignorance and like ask him about something, yeah. and then he would like pick a position. And I'm yeah. sorry, where, where is this story going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like he, he would like pick a position and I would, yeah. I, I, I would like poke, poke at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and he was like, if I, I asked him about apostasy and he was like, um, obviously in Islam, yeah. it says the government should, you know, do yeah. it. So, but since we are in a secular country, yes. like it doesn't happen. So strangely, so like I, I grew up in Pakistan. I went to school in Pakistan. And everything in Pakistan, every man, boy in the age has had exposure to homosexuality. Mm -hmm. It's extremely common in Pakistan. Just happens because there's old boys' schools and there's old girls' schools. When they are 16 or 17, of course they get exposed to it. So sometimes Pakistanis don't mind homosexuality yeah as long as they don't admit it that they don't mind yeah. it can I exist mean, like, around I've, I've them had, like, because he very, has all their lives yeah i've had a very weird experience like i think you know that one right what yeah. son uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll yes. have to turn the video off so <laughs> that shouldn't go on internet <laughs> I, should, I should just raise the case of uh, nisar hussein um Nassar is a, an ex-Muslim who converted to Christianity. He used to live in Bradford. And uh, a few years ago, oh, yeah. when uh, it became known to the local Muslims that yes. he had apostatized, he started receiving uh, threats, not just to him, but to his family as well. He's a father of six children. Yeah. Um, the threats became progressively more violent, and it, it got to a point where one day, as he was getting out of his car, these two Islamists uh, jumped on him with a hatchet and a baseball bat yeah. and left him for dead. Uh, he survived, thankfully, but in the end, himself and his family were forced to leave Bradford under armed police escort to uh, ease community tensions. Yeah. Police forced them out of the area to appease yeah. the local Islamists because they knew about his apostasy. So not everyone is so lucky, unfortunately. Yeah, no, that, that that's true. There are incidents. There's incident badly school teacher. Yeah. They had to live in hiding. It is getting more like there's been. Uh, there was a new report by the government on uh, extremism in Britain, and it specifically talks about anti-blasphemy sentiment and they talk about how it's increased in last five years or so because it's being imported from Pakistan. It feels like I think if we're just socializing I'd love to close this place up and go to the pub across the road yeah so we can finish this and we'll just go to a pub and get things and we'll just as we can do it today. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much well, for doing this you. again. Thank you. Yeah. It was great. And thank you everybody for coming. Keep an eye out for the next ones. And I'll keep you all updated. Yeah. Thank you. So. Cheers.